I am going to continue to predict on this channel. And so far, these two predictions are turning out to be true. Actually, several. <laughs> but let's start out with there's not going to be a recession. The more recent prediction I've made is that bonds had gone as far as they were going to go in terms of high yields or that they were going to top out be below 5% or at 5%, never got to 5%. Um, and uh, that the Fed is not going to raise interest rates anymore. Those are just a few of my predictions that are turning out to be true, and uh, we'll get into some of that. Headline PPI came in hot. I did not predict that. <laughs> the core came in a little bit warm. And a new one that I've never actually seen before that they're, that's in all the reporting this morning is the takes out trade services also, and that was in line with market expectations. Anyway, the market seemed to be completely shrugging off the PPI. Uh, they, they're completely shrugging off the war. Um, Tesla is outpacing all the other indexes again this morning, including the Magnificent Seven. Bond yields continue down. Oil continues down. I think I predicted that one too. All right. So this is Randy Kirk. If you want to like the channel that gets it right more often than it gets it wrong, the $300 price point for Tesla is coming too. That will be at the end of this month um, after the earnings report next week when people start concentrating on the fourth quarter. Um, I'll also have a uh, couple more Brian's, two more Brian's, one today, one tomorrow. And then we have our midweek hot takes tonight. You want to hit subscribe and then notify so that you never miss an episode from this channel. All right. CNBC says, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm done. Uh, saying I told you so. CNBC says today, the producer price index, which measures costs for finished goods that producers pay, increased 0.5% for the month. That's a month over month number against the Dow Jones estimate of 0.3%. That was less than the 0.7% increase in August. However, so this may be part of the concentration on the market this morning. Excluding food and energy, the core PPI was up 0.3%. That was expected to be 0.2%. Excluding food, energy, and trade services, the index rose 0.2%. That's the one I've never seen before. That was in line with estimates, never saw the estimates, never even seen this analysis before. On a year-over-year -year basis, the headline PPI increased 2.2%. All right, that's the largest move since April, where it's been up about 0.1% year-over-year. The 12-month pace has slowed to as 0.2% in June, but has been on the rise since. I, don't have, I didn't have time to completely get into the PPI this morning and analyze it myself. If I see anything, I'll report on that tonight or tomorrow. The markets have been apparently focusing on the year-over-year -year rate and on that uh, point, the 0.2% uh, one that they got right. I don't know. But uh, the yields are continuing down this morning, which means basically the PPI has been uh, ignored or something, or that they liked what they saw. I noted in a video the other day, there have been numbers and numbers, huge numbers of uh, people that have tried to prove that there's a relationship between the PPI and the CPI, not just in the United States. They've done it in other countries. They've done it on a worldwide basis. All kinds of people have tried to prove a relationship, which you'd expect there to be one. And that's why these these people have done these in, uh, huge year over year uh, decade over decade analyses, and nobody has been able to show that there is any kind of relationship between PPI and CPI going forward. So maybe uh, people have listened to this channel and, and realized that now. All right, trueflation is still sitting at 2.5% this morning. It's been four months now at 2.5, which kind of is uh, in, in line with some of the other analyses that are happening now that this is now three to four months that everything is fine with inflation. Okay, it's not 2%. But, okay, NFIB report. This is a big one. This is one I pay a lot of attention to because small business is the engine of the U.S. economy. 2% of owners. This is their. This is the big takeaway for me. 2%. That's not none. 2% of owners reported that all their borrowing needs were not satisfied. Only 2% are worried about borrowing more money. 23% reported all their credit needs met, and 65% they are not interested in a loan. <laughs> now, this is this is important. This didn't hit any of the news yesterday. 
<laughs> Nobody's talking about this. A net 8% reported that their last loan was harder to get than in a previous attempts. And that was really important. That, that I, I don't know what else to say. This is, again, if you listen to this channel, how long have I been saying this? We have been projecting, we, not me, everybody else has been projecting a recession now for two years. We've just come off of this craziness. What do you think a smart business owner will be doing? Well, a smart business owner, if they read my books on recession, would be hoarding cash. They would not be looking for to borrow money. They would be hoarding cash and they would be trying to keep themselves in a very, very, very good position with regard to cash. I will go, there's more to this. Just wait a minute. Small business owners also said they were still having major problems getting enough qualified employees and that their biggest issue was figuring out how to pass on wholesale price increases. So they've got these wholesale price increases. They're having trouble getting them through at retail. That says that the consumer is resisting these price increases. As noted yesterday, a lot of goods prices are still moving up about 4% per year. So that 4%, that's going to be hard at some point. Consumers are not going to be willing to take a 4% increase. 4% of owners reported that financing was their top business problem. A net 26% of owners reported paying a higher rate in their most recent loans. And then the Wall Street Journal is out this morning. Now listen to this. Third quarter earnings season is getting underway and it will likely be much better than second quarters for U.S. public companies. Industry estimates Estimates indicate that the members of the S&P 500 will report earnings per share 1.3% higher than a year earlier, a nice improvement from the second quarter's decline of 2.8%. Okay, so why would that happen? <laughs> so we'll talk about that. So there's a evidence, according to this Wall Street Journal article, that the fourth quarter will be even better. Okay, here we go. This is due to two reasons. Number one, productivity is dramatically improving. That's how wealth is created. That's how earnings are created, is better productivity. Their productivity continues to happen. And the big companies have also been preparing. They're smarter. I don't know, maybe it's not true. <laughs> One would think that their CFOs, more highly educated, smarter, they are also preparing for the recession that it's never come. So the corporations are also going to be in better shape with regard to their borrowing, with regard to their cash on hand, and they are being lean and mean right now. And they're looking for more and more opportunities to improve their productivity. This bodes extremely well for 2024. Um, anyway, this is my analysis. I, I'm sticking with it. Details of the new Morgan Stanley note from yesterday. You know, uh, the Morgan Stanley note was basically talking about the fact that Tesla is way beyond being just a car company now. It isn't hitting the uh, the P&L yet, but it's going to. And they went into great depth about what the dojo is going to be doing, about the opportunities that they might have in terms of even something like a cell phone. I, 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 I'm not, I'm just not okay. I don't think we should do a cell phone or um, a cell phone. I don't think we should do a smartphone. Uh, Elon has talked about it. Uh, Morgan Stanley talked about it in terms of that X might need one also. So if X and Tesla both feel they need their own smartphone, that this might be a direction where the manufacturing company, Tesla, would make the phone for both. Anything's possible. Factory wraps are now available from Tesla. This is a big one. Well, it's not a huge one. It's not going to amount to very many dollars. Model 3 and Model Y uh, you can get them wrapped now for about seventy-five to eight thousand dollars. They are offering seven stunning colors and a three to five day turnaround. I've said this before. I don't believe that the older crowd that is mostly buying Teslas right now is at all worried about seeing themselves coming and going. If they if they are, it's certainly not showing up in the LA streets. Um, you know, I'm in Riverside. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I don't know how many thousands of Model 3s and Model Ys on the streets of Riverside. And as I drive across town into Los Angeles, uh, uh, even more. And yet people continue to buy them in big numbers, 22% of all cars bought in, in so far in, Cal in California this year have been Teslas. Um, so um, I don't think people really care. Apparently they don't care. But for those few who do and want to spend seven, $8,000 uh, to get a wrap, they can do that. Now, it turns out 
that some people are saying, oh my gosh, you know, it generally costs like $2,500 to ramp your car. According to BLKMDL3, at BLKMDL3, Black Model 3. Okay, that's what that stands for. For those who think that the Tesla is, uh, uh, think that that's a high price, uh, this is this is because it's, it's not a house-colored PPF. It's colored PPF, not vinyl. It's more expensive and more difficult. They also are going to do the door jams, which often requires the doors to be removed and is very labor intensive. This is a very competitive pricing, in particular in California, for this type of wrap. Obviously, this implies that Cybertrucks will have this option as well, which we talked about a couple of months ago. If they're going to put all these wrapped Cybertrucks on the road and they look great wrapped, um, we would expect that to happen. There is a Twitter post, yeah, Twitter, an X post yesterday that says that uh, six months from production is when Cybertrucks will be offering the wrap. Uh, no idea where they get that idea. Uh, they didn't give, a, you know, inside information. Okay. Inside EVs is reporting this morning on brand loyalty. This might be old news. This might have been out for a couple of days. I might have even seen it before, but I'm just going to report on it now. Um, Tesla, once again, leading in brand loyalty with a rate of 68.4% for the first half of 2023. Only 31.6% of owners leave Tesla after they're when they're ready to buy another vehicle. The Tesla Model 3 stood out as the clear leader with more than 74% of its returning con consumers remaining loyal to the brand. I'm going to say that the main reason that people do not remain loyal to the Tesla Model Y is because it does not have a luxurious enough ride. And some people may are be, may be looking to go back to a ride that's a little less stiff. This will be solved with Juniper as it's already been solved with the Model 3 Highland R Plus or whatever's going on out there. That's to me was the most exciting part of the upgrade. Mercedes has a new offering in the electronic semi space, the, the electric semi space. It is apparently shooting for a shorter range segment. It has a limited range of just 300 so so miles. If it's everything about the truck specs out less impressively than the Tesla, and then it costs twice as much as the equivalent diesel. This is according to Mercedes. They say that they'll make up the difference in three years. Tesla says you'll pay for the truck in two years. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Mercedes, you're looking for a niche. But how are you going to even succeed in the niche if you get 300 miles and you cost twice as much in Tesla? Anyway, I don't get it. They're going to have to do a lot better than that. It also wasn't that great looking like compared to the Tesla. Okay, it's time to look at the final numbers here. Let's take a look. Where are we now? Well, um, there's a little sell-off taking place. So people uh, were excited. Um, uh, the market was way, way up. Now we're not doing as well. The Dow is up, uh, whoops, oh man. The Dow, <laughs> I'm very sorry. The Dow is up 0.15%. The NASDAQ is up a half a percent. S&P up 0.21%. Tesla is up a little over a half a percent. So it is still uh, outstripping the NASDAQ and the Dow, everything else uh, at uh, up $1.66, but it was up almost $4. Uh, the Magnificent 7, except for Apple, is still up barely, but they are also topping off a little bit. Um, and the Kathy Woods are still almost all up, but slightly, just barely. So from where we, the exuberance that we had early in the morning, for some reason, is, is come off just a little bit. Uh, Tesla looks like it's bottoming out at that $1.70, um, where... Uh, the other markets are still looking like the the indexes are looking like they're still trending down a little bit. All right, let's look at the uh, uh, the general numbers here. We have got the Bitcoin down. Whoops, we have got the Bitcoin down 254 this morning, still above 27,000. We've got the dollar pausing. Uh, they're saying it's ahead of Fed minutes. I don't know. I think there's a lot more going on the Fed minutes. That's the headline though. Uh, we've got gold up again. Uh, back to 1882, up $7 this morning. We have got oil down almost a buck now to 884.99. Oops, just, just went above 85 a little bit. 
Um, but anyway, right around $85. I'm thinking it stays in the 85s for a while. I don't see it dropping back into the 70s or going back into the 90s. I think we'll be trading in a range right now, 80 to 90. And then we've got bonds down uh, six, almost six basis points to 4.599. I think we're going back to 4.25. I think it's going to be really hard to get under 4.25 unless there is something significant uh, that drives that. But people are starting to recognize that it's time to lock in these numbers. And the more they go down, the more people are going to be like, oh, oh, I better lock these in if, if, in order to get the advantage of the bonds increasing in value going forward. This is not investment advice. Never follow my investment advice. Take what I say uh, with three grains of salt. Um, analyze what my analysis is. Uh, do your own analysis and uh, look at all kinds of other information and then make your decisions. I am not a, an investment advisor. Um, okay, and then uh, uh, let's uh, let's look just one last time. Yeah, everything's about the same. Okay, um, yes, as I mentioned, uh, we have Brian's coming up. We had Brian's yesterday. So this is a Brian week, <laughs> a total of four episodes with Brian. So make sure to hit like, uh, uh, subscribe and notify. And then you want to join Patreon. Uh, I'm putting, uh, I didn't put up any news, zero. To, listen, um, if you're still hanging in there and listening right now and you're old, uh, let's say you're over 60, over 65, over 70. I know a lot of folks that follow this channel are old. Uh, I had an episode yesterday with dehydration. Yeah, this is something that happens to old folks. Okay, I was so dizzy, I couldn't stand up could not walk. Uh, it completely destroyed my entire day. The only reason it wasn't worse is that I had just talked, I had another friend of mine who's my same age who had had a dehydration episode where they got dizzy and it took them a week to figure out what was going on with multiple trips to the doctor. Fortunately, he had just had this episode, so I, I recognized it immediately uh, and was able to deal with it. But uh, stay hydrated. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a, a personal aside this morning. It, so that's why there was no news being posted yesterday up on uh, Patreon. There will be today. I will start posting. They'll be posting all day. Anything that comes up that I think is valuable. Okay, that's why you want to pay your $5 or your $10 uh, per month to get that news, uh, as well as sometimes I do put up uh, uh, some of the videos up early. Um, we've got a uh, the Cybertruck uh, that you can buy immediately. You don't have to wait. There's no line. You don't have to wait for this one. You don't have to put your number in. It'll ship within a day or two of when, put, when you put your order in. So, and it comes in cameo. Look at that, a wrap. I had the wrap way ahead. All right. So you can get it either way. They're $25. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal gift. Unbelievable for everybody that you know that loves Tesla. The first person you should gift this to is yourself. You can put this up on your home freezer, refrigerator. You can put it in your den. You can put it up on a wall. It can become, you know, I've got it right now as a shelf, as a shelf object. This is a, this is, in, how does it get any better than this? You send your $25 to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all lowercase letters, and it, I'll ship it out right away. Um, if you want more than 10, 10 or more, it's about 10% discount. Give me a holler down below and we'll talk about what your discount's going to be on 10 or more. If you're outside the country, please add $20 for freight. And then, um, yes, please tell me, do you want the stainless version or the regular version or however you want to call it? Or do you want the camo version? Because otherwise we have to get into an email back and forth to figure that out. Okay. Um, and then you get it free. If you join Patreon, you get it free. Yesterday, I threw in an audio book and the uh, and the Cybertruck. That was a one-day deal and people took advantage of it. Maybe I'll do it again on another day, but not today. So anyway, get your get your Cybertruck. You know you want it. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's what we've got. Um, I, let's see, what yesterday I had, uh, as I mentioned, some Brian videos. I will put at least one of those up uh, for you to possibly go take a look at. Uh, Tesla is now down, only, I mean, down from where it was. It's only up uh, half a dollar now, um, and the uh, the major indexes are continuing to go down. I'm expecting that this will not be a continuation. I think we will see a point at which the markets will now turn again and go back the other direction. Now, they may be a little nervous about the Fed minutes later today. 
that might be part of what is causing uh, folks to say, hey, uh, let's take some profits ahead of these Fed minutes. Uh, Tesla is just about to go into the red. That's it. I've got I've got to run. It's been great talking to you.